Hello, this is David Gordon Koch reporting from Moncton for the NB Media Co-op. I'm speaking to Nicola Taylor, chair of NB Acorn. Nicola, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. Well, uh, the government of Premier Susan Holt has introduced rent control legislation in the Legislative Assembly. Today, we're speaking on Wednesday, November 20th. Uh, it would cap the rent, as you know, at 3% annually starting in February. So uh, what's your take on this legislation, Nicola? Well, we find it um, a positive step forward, especially after the several years we've had where tenants have just had a raw end of the deal um, and have been really struggling. So we've been fighting hard for this, so we take it as a victory. And um, I think that... Um, it's going to help and be a, a relief for a lot of people out there. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of uh, issues have you, been, have you been hearing about as far as renters, uh, issues that renters are facing um, in the province of New Brunswick and uh, the Fredericton area where you're located right now? Well, uh, province-wide, um, we've had many uh, people come to us who've had um, rent increases as high as 65, 70%, uh, which is just not feasible, really, especially if you're on low to, to moderate incomes. Um, and um, so this actually stops that because they can now only top it at 3%. Um, and another thing that we find is um, landlords are starting to, so if the apartment was including heat, Landlords are now starting to take that away um, and tell tenants that they have to uh, pay for that separately. So that's another big issue that's come in, especially with um, the power hike, you know, the price hikes of NB Power this year and the coming year. Um, we know that there's going to be more, more um, an increase again. Um, so these kind of things really affect um, tenants and our members. And so um, this rent increase actually is coming to uh sorry this rent cap is actually a um a relief of at least um landlords putting up rents to 65 70 percent or, or whatever they feel like so um it's just it's a good step forward and one that we do welcome at mba fund mm. 65 percent rent hike uh was an extraordinary yeah. extraordinary level uh, it really is, yeah. And it's not uncommon either these days to get those kind of uh, increases. Now, under, if I recall correctly, under the existing system that the previous government, the government of Blaine Higgs, put in place, if a rent was deemed to be unreasonable compared to market rate in the in the general area, then it could be reviewed and then phased in over over a series a period of time is that correct correct so their new their old system um and they updated it just re just before with the election uh it was it was all calculations and you had to work out cpi and uh, things like that to know whether your rent is over that or not That's and consumer price uh, index Exactly. And, and it, it was just really complicated. Um, most of us don't know what that is. And we don't really care to know what that is, to be honest, unless you're, you know, you're using that on a daily basis. Um, so to work out that kind of formula and then try and work out if your rent has gone over that and then, and then you know, have, the, have then to um, call the uh, tenants and landlords relation office to try and get that um, looked into. It was very timely, and I think it put a lot of tenants off doing that. Um, if they ruled that it was too high, they they can decide to phase it in over three years, and that did happen for many people. Um, but it, it just was so complicated, and it didn't need to be that complex. The simple rent cap with a set at a certain percentage is all that anybody needs to know, whether you are a tenant or a landlord, it just keeps it simplified and it's easy to follow so um i think what what we've got now is a much easier system and and i think a lot of people will benefit from that 
and your group, NB Acorn, has been fighting for this, campaigning for it for a significant period of time now. There was a, a, a rent cap temporarily in place at one point under Blaine Higgs, but after uh, all of this campaigning, this uh, feels like a, a real victory for for uh, your group, I take it. Yeah, it does. So we we were established at the end of 2020 um, because of the uh, evictions that were taking place during COVID and all, all that kind of thing. Um, and since then, we, we've been campaigning for a rent cap to be put in place because obviously after the pandemic, we started to see extremely um, high costs everywhere, as everyone felt. Um, they did give us a temporary rent cap for 2022 um, at 3.8%. And they took it away again at the end of that year and um, saying that it deters developers, which, you know, top economists said, no, it doesn't. And we saw from some of the housing stats, um, actually, that came out um, saying that it hadn't deterred development. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we were just struggling to understand why um, we couldn't have such a system in place. And um, so, yes, this is a very... This is a victory for us, and I think it's one that uh, renters uh, in New Brunswick definitely deserve, and I think it will make life so much easier for so many people now. Um, and what the positive news is that anybody who's, because as you know, um, you, you get the notification six months before they can raise the rent. So anybody who received a notification from September onward, this is going to apply. This 3% uh, rent cap will apply. Sadly, it doesn't um, apply to people who got a notification before then. Um, and the whole old system still applies. So even if they have a three year phased in, that will still apply from what I understand. Um, but it is good news if you've received a rent increase um, notification from September onwards, because that means they cannot raise your rent um, treat by uh, over 3%. And it means landlords can't be sneaky from now until then to try and do that. So they have thought of ways to um, do that in a sensible way that doesn't have too much of an impact on tenants. So. I think um, it's all a big victory for us, definitely. Hmm. Well, uh, I guess, you know, first of all, I want to say congratulations on that. Um, and, I, you know, at the same time, you know, we were, we were talking off camera uh, a moment ago. You were saying more has to happen as well uh, to deal with, with the housing crisis in uh, New Brunswick. So can we talk about that a little bit? What else has to happen uh, in, in your view to improve uh, the housing uh, for, for, for uh, poor and, and working people? So much actually, but um, so one of our big uh, demands apart from having the rent cap was um, also to reform the Residential Tenancy Act. So that hasn't been reformed in detail, I think since the seventies, so, you know. I mean, they've added a little bit here and there to it, um, obviously to update it like the new renovation law, if we can call it that, that took place in summer of last year. Um, but it, it needs a big overhaul. And that is something that we've been calling on as, as long as we have for the rent cap. And we were very pleased to hear that the Susan Holt government decided to include that in their platform. and. NBA Corn have met with um, David Hickey, the new um, housing minister, and I know that is something that they are very keen um, to do. And he has um, expressed that we um, sit at the table um, and, and discuss how that can be done. So um, we're very excited and looking forward to having a closer relationship with this government than we did with the previous. Um, because we do have some recommendations of what's been gone before us in different provinces across the country, um, where we know that when you've just introduced a rent cap, but you've not actually made other rent control laws robust, it doesn't actually help. So a rent cap is good, but you actually need a, a much stronger and robust system around that um, in order to protect 
tenants further. And that is what we are calling out for. Mm. Oh, c- can you give me an example? What, what is some of the, uh, what's an example of the regulations that are needed to yeah, make that system more robust? So, as I said, the rent eviction, they did, uh, the previous housing minister, Jill Green, did bring in a rent eviction law loosely based on what's happening in British Columbia, where um, the landlord has to have that approved by the tenant and landlord relations office. Um, they can't just um, throw people out just to paint walls or to replace kitchen cupboards. It has to be something massive that means the tenant can't live there anymore. Um, but it's, it wasn't robust enough, uh, and um, that has to change. So one of the things that landlords were using, and we know we know they have used because some of our members have told us, is that they um, tell somebody we need you out um, because we're going to move a family member in, which they're entitled to do, but there is no way to check that's what they're doing, even under this law. So the onus of that still heavily relies on the tenant to report it. Now, if you've been renovated, um, you've moved on, you've moved to another apartment, how are you going to check to, to um, know if the landlord has really um, stuck to what you know the law says? It's impossible unless you can somehow get back into the building, which most likely you're not going to be able to, or you might catch them out if they're advertising the apartment for a higher rent for someone else and it's not their relative. Um, but it's highly unlikely that tenants are going to go back, you know, months later to see if the landlord's really done what he or, he or she said. So um, in that case, um, the onus has to switch. So it shouldn't anymore be on the tenant to report. It should be on the landlord. And there should be a system in place where they have that kind of, um, they have resources um, to make sure and to follow up that that's been done and right now we don't have that here in New Brunswick on anything actually on any of the on any of the tenant laws that we have it all relies on the tenants to um report and it's just not good enough we need something more more uh, like balanced on the other side if that makes sense so we are actually hoping to have some kind of enforcement unit um where they can follow up and make sure these things are done. Hmm. So, and that is that we're in place in BC. So a lot of what we um, are asking for has happened over there in BC and they have pretty robust laws over there um, considering, you know, much better than what we have. Um, and um, we, we think that if we can have something similar to that, but stronger actually, um, it will make it, for a much better rent control system here in New Brunswick. Hmm. And uh, NB Acorn is having rallies uh, this uh, Friday, I believe, in uh, Fredericton and uh, in Moncton. Uh, can you tell me about uh, about those? So we are doing, so it's National Housing Day um, in Canada on the 22nd of November. And Acorn Canada are having uh, actions nationwide um, with different chapters across the country. And exactly, Fred- Fredericton and Moncton are taking part. And our, it's like our launch, if you like, of Do Rent Control Right. So we know we've got the rent cap in place. We know that the whole government wants to reform the uh, Residential Tenancy Act. And so we have some recommendations that we believe the government should look into and follow um, in order to make that those rent control laws really robust so um it's like a launch of that campaign but also in a way it's it's also to acknowledge that the whole t- government has listened to tenants um and you know has made this a priority which um we welcome so um it's it's a mixture of both um and we just want to make sure that you know, when when we're talking about rent control, it does go further than the rent cap. And um, we do get those laws in place that can protect tenants even further from bad landlords. And so that's what it's all about on Friday. 
Okay, and we'll post details on uh, mbmediacorp.org. And uh, just before we wrap up, uh, Nicola, uh, how did you become involved? You're a volunteer yourself in this role as chair of NB Acorn. Uh, how did you um, end up in this role? So we were, um, when we came, we came to Canada 2018 as uh, new immigrants or newcomers, and um, we found a nice place to live and it was relatively cheap, the rent, and we stayed at that rent for four, the four years uh, our old landlord was there, but he was, he was get, getting on in age, so he decided it was too much for him to continue, so he decided to sell the building. Um, the the person who took over, they decided to hit us also with a massive rent increase. Um, and then when we challenged that, um, because that, that came at the time when um, he, he tried to give us that. And I think that was just as the new law came into place that they have to give you the six months notice and they'd only given us four. So they took that rent increase away and then gave us another a big rent increase and then they decided you know what it's better just to get rid of everybody in the building and uh, they ran evicted all of us so we had 22 units in that building and they told us all we had to leave and they basically said it was unlivable and you know things like that so I was we were we were all looking like what can we do to fight this and it um, there was nothing to do at all we did try and call um it was then called the RTP but it's now a tenant and landlord relations office. We did call them to try and see what we could do, but really there wasn't much at all we could do at that point. Um, so somebody mentioned Acorn because they did of Nova Scotia Acorn. And I managed to reach out and I uh, um, hired off a very long, lengthy kind of complaint about how come there's nothing we can do. You know, so many people are, are losing their homes and there's been. There was people who'd lived in their apartments for 14 or more years. So it's a proper home, you know, for them. So um, they, uh, we, we had our organizer come round and uh, basically said we can do a rally. Um, the, it's not going to stop what's happening, but it will draw attention to what's going on. So that's what we did. We did a rally outside our um, apartment building on Main Street in Fredericton and um, um, you know, it was very successful. And um, actually, not long after that, they called the temporary rent, rent cap, uh, rent increase, uh, rent cap, sorry, <laughs> the temporary one. And um, so, you know, I don't know if it was off of that, that's what they did, or if they just understood the situa situation at that point was getting really out of control. Mm -hmm. um, but it's obviously got a lot worse since. Um, so I believed in what Acorn was doing and trying to help people um, on, lo on low to moderate incomes um, fight this kind of thing and be a voice, really, for people who thought for so long that there's just nothing they could do. Um, and, you know, as, as we said at the beginning, uh, since 2020, we've been fighting for better um, laws. And um, even though that rent cap was temporarily in place, we knew we had to try and fight to keep it permanent. And also we were fighting for a rent eviction ban as well. So there have been some small wins along the way, like the rent eviction ban. It did come into place in the summer of 2023. It's just not strong. So it just needs to be more robust, as I said. And um, this, this for us, the, the fact that, you know, Higgs lost the election and... Um, Susan Holt won and um but even in campaigning we found that the Liberal Party, the Green Party and the NDP party, they were all campaigning for rent control and rent cap. So they had all listened and they had all taken note of what was going on and um that's something that they all had on their platforms. And and even that for us felt like a win because you know we we'd been campaigning long and hard for it. So it it is a very bittersweet um, victory because so many people, as you can imagine, lost or had to, pay, like we said, had to receive 65% rent increases and so on um, previously. But 
this sort of light helps control that now. Um, and, you know, it's just some positive steps from a, from a government who we feel at this moment is prepared to listen. And we hope that continues and we're looking forward to working with them going further as well. Okay, well, um, I've been speaking to Nicola Taylor, chair of NB Acorn. Uh, thanks so much for joining the NB Media Club today, Nicola. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks very much.